Hello, welcome back to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. My name's Amy and for today's video, we're going to have a look at the importance of oxygen. In A-level biology, you will have learned about gas exchange and should have a good understanding at this point of how different organisms manage to extract oxygen from their environments. But if you would like to refresh, then you can check out this video just up here before we carry on talking about the overall importance of oxygen for all life on Earth. Today we're going to take a step away from a myopic view of gas exchange and have a look at the importance of oxygen in a much wider context. I'm talking the evolutionary significance of the relationship between pretty much all life on Earth and this very important gas. More than three billion years ago when life began on Earth, there were only very basic raw materials from which life could begin. Early life forms were very simple. They could extract everything they needed from their environment around them without the need for any specialized organs. However, as those developed and became much more complex, gas exchange mechanisms needed to adapt too to keep up with this complexity. Over time, these mechanisms have become fine-tuned and nowadays organisms are almost perfectly suited to the environment in which they live. From diffusion across the cell membrane of a single-celled organism to the incredible air sac complex lung system that birds have, gas exchange is very efficient for the organism which it serves. Today, pretty much all life on Earth needs oxygen. It is vital. Apart from one known species, which was discovered last year, and it's found in the mussel of salmon, which has given up oxygen altogether. It has no mitochondria. And as you know, the mitochondria are where respiration takes place. This was found when scientists were sequencing the genome of this parasite and discovered that the section which codes for the mitochondria was just missing. Because it's a relatively recent discovery, more work needs to be done on exactly how this parasite manages to survive without oxygen. But with that one species aside, there is a fundamental relationship between life on Earth and the atmosphere in which it is living in. The amount of gaseous oxygen in the atmosphere hasn't been the same over evolutionary time and almost definitely won't be the same going forward. Already, CO2 levels are on the rise as a result of human activities and can be influenced by volcanic activity too. And as you may know, oxygen isn't the most abundant gas in our atmosphere, nitrogen is. So that begs the question as to why we don't breathe nitrogen. To answer this question, we have to take a look back at the Earth 500 million years ago, when something pivotal happened, the emergence of plants. It's plants that we can thank for our dependence on oxygen. Before plants were a thing, our atmosphere was carbon dioxide rich. This abundance of carbon dioxide is why plants use it to produce energy for growth. As plants became more numerous, photosynthesis drove down atmospheric CO2 and atmospheric oxygen increased instead. Because plants are so successful, atmospheric oxygen levels started to place a huge evolutionary pressure on other life forms at the time, driving the adaptation of organisms to use this abundance of oxygen. Eventually, life forms grew to become dependent on oxygen for getting energy for growth and other life processes, which works nicely for the plants. As you know, carbon dioxide is a waste product of our respiration, which plants can then use for their respiration, which gives us oxygen, and so the cycle continues. Luckily for us, oxygen is a highly reactive molecule that produces a lot more energy in respiration compared to carbon dioxide, which is used in photosynthesis. The use of oxygen is a major player in the development of more complex and intelligent life forms that don't just exist, but can actually interact with each other and form bigger communities. This is why life forms which haven't been around as long as plants now dominate the planet, for example us. The relationship between plants and animals that use oxygen to respire has kept the Earth's atmosphere in a Goldilocks state, where everything functions in harmony. However, we are now facing a climate crisis as a result of too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You may not know this, but carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere today are at the highest point they've ever been in 800,000 years. Every year we are pumping out more carbon dioxide than natural processes can remove through photosynthesis or other forms of natural carbon storage. Because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, this has led to our planet warming up and it will probably continue to heat up. This gas can also get into our oceans where it dissolves and changes the acidity 
of the water in our seas. Who knows what kinds of evolutionary pressures this is gonna place on organisms on planet Earth in the years to come. I feel like I could probably guess. Anyway, to end on a pretty gloomy outlook, hopefully that has taught you something you didn't know about the importance of oxygen for life on Earth and maybe given you an appreciation for how important it is that we try to reduce our CO2 emissions and stop the planet from heating up. I really enjoyed putting this video together. Let us know if you have any other ideas for specification content that you would like to know about in a much wider context. If you're new to Snap Revise, then please do check out the rest of our channel and consider subscribing to help with your A-level revision. We have tutor videos, online streamed web classes, as well as advice videos and some other videos like this one, which aim to take your specification learning into the real world. Best of luck with your revision and hopefully see you back on the channel soon.